All right, let's get to Amazon. Amazon is jumping about 3% after shareholders approved a 20 for 1 stock split at its annual meeting today. Yes, the vote was today. So Amazon right now at $2,145 a share. The online retail giant also opening a brand new brick and mortar clothing store in Los Angeles today. But is that enough to revive the stock to where it was before its very disappointing first quarter earnings miss? On its earnings call, Amazon had admitted it's scaling back warehouses because it had ramped up too quickly in the build out of warehouses. They were looking at soaring pandemic sales and they said, we, we need more space. But now online orders have slowed and the e-commerce giant is going to start leasing about 30 million square feet of its warehouses to shed dead space. Let's get to the guy who leases these commercial properties here in a Fox Business exclusive. Marcus and Milichap, president and CEO, Hesem Naji. Uh, Hesem, welcome back to the show. Well, tell us what you are seeing in the landscape and and uh, again we've said this throughout the hour and the past couple of days so much has changed in just the past four weeks liz great to be with you again thanks for having me on the program the landscape of commercial real estate overall is looking very positive because the reopening of the economy has really spurred a lot of demand from uh, whether it's apartments that are seeing record renter demand to warehouse distribution. We'll talk about Amazon in a moment. That's been a very, very strong performer because of e-commerce. Uh, and uh, even retail, we've seen the return of experiential retail. Restaurants are opening again. Fitness centers are opening again. Those are the segments of retail that were doing great before the pandemic. And of course, they were devastated during the pandemic. But we're also seeing demand for self-storage units, student housing uh, coming back. And the one that's lagging more than any property type is the office sector, mm -hmm. of course, because mm -hmm. of the hybrid work environment and a lot of cloud over what the future of office space usage will be. But overall, from the space demand perspective, our industry is doing very well. Hessem, thank you for being honest about commercial real estate, because I'm sitting here thinking, at least in the office space area, I was going to have to really nudge you here because I've been talking to more than 100 CEOs about their commercial office space, and they are scaling it back because the number one, and I was looking at this on, on Handshake, which is a website that indicates this, the number one search term now for job hunters is the word remote. So how do you expect that to ever turn around? Well, first of all, Liz, remember the current leases that are in place on average have three and a half to four years left. So the tenants have obligations to continue to paying the rent. But as these leases roll over, uh, you're going to see smaller footprint. Every company we're working with, all of our clients across the country and ourselves are looking at more efficiency. And uh, we're actually not reducing our foot footprint. We are looking for ways to have more sales and more production from the existing uh, footprint, if you will. A lot of companies are doing the same thing. Demand for office space is going to be hampered in the next 18 to 24 months because of the hybrid work environment. We really believe that it's going to be somewhat painful in the next uh, foreseeable future, let's say. But after that, if we get past this uh, Fed tightening, if we get past this question mark of a recession or no recession in the next year or so, the U.S. economy is doing very well. I have to remember, we were not overbuilding commercial real estate before the pandemic. We're not overbuilding it now. Banks are in great shape. The loan performances have been in great shape. So the economic cycle is going to create new demand that I think is going to mm -hmm. offset a lot of what is in the short term, some pain from the hybrid work environment. Well, yeah. And as we transition really quickly with the time we have left to residential, we do know that shelter uh, inflation, Right. Certainly in the most recent CPI number is skyrocketing. And, and quite frankly, there are a lot of people who believe that that number is a lot higher than what we had originally seen. There is not enough, obviously, inventory and people's rents are going skyward. And so my, my question is, how doesn't that eventually something has to give? Absolutely. On the for sale side, Liz, 15 and a half, 16 percent year over year median home price increase is not sustainable. Put on top of that interest rate increases, we're seeing a lot of people now be priced out of the for sale housing market and come back into apartments. Apartment demand was at a record level in the first quarter. Rents were up 17 percent year over year. We also don't think that is sustainable. 
But high single digits, low double digit rent growth in the next couple of years seems to be very supportable, which is what is uh, supporting valuations. There is a housing shortage in our country. There is an affordability problem, whether it's apartments or for sale housing, that has to be addressed. The only way it's ever going to get resolved is public private partnership. A lot of our clients are working on that as we speak. Hessam, come back again because this is a, a morphing story on a weekly basis. We appreciate you coming to explain what's going on, at least right now. Great to be with you.